Hi, my name is Aaron Berg. In this video, I'll present my impressions and general evaluation of the new digital survey device called the Brick 4, or Bluetooth Ruggedized Integrated Cartographer Version 4. I'll address three key questions that I have about the device. First, do I like it enough to even use it? So let's call that an initial impression and usability. The second question is, after calibration, does it give reasonable survey shot numbers in comparison with the Cave Research Foundation survey course? We'll go into some detail on that. And the third key question is, how does it perform in the cave? So answering these will help me with the big question that I really want to know the answer to, and that's, can I tell an accurate cave cartography story using data from the Brick 4? Let's find out. The brick is aptly named because, well, it's kind of like a brick. Actually, it's exactly the same size as the case used to house the Disto X2 because the device is literally built into the Pelican 1015 case. Different from the Disto X2, there's only one external button, which is this one, which is used to turn it on and fire the laser to take a measurement. To get to the other features of the device, you have to open it like this, and then you click the top button here to get to the menu that provides access to lots of features. On first handling the brick, some of the features I like are the ability to see the last five shots, easily change the shot delay, and the onboard error tracking feature, which is pretty awesome. You can see the top row has an E in front of it. You can find out what's going on there by going to the menu, going to error information, and taking a look. So in short, the device feels big, but that's based on years of using the Disto X2, so I'm sure that I and other members of the survey teams I work with can get used to it. There's really nothing to dislike, and my initial impression is positive, so this answers the first question. Do I like it enough to keep using it? Yes. <laughs> We're at Cave Research Foundation's Hamilton Valley facility, and we are looking at a new survey device called a Brick 4. And so right now we will shoot this on the CRF compass course, which is right here. Okay, so we're reading the top number there. So this is a brand new unit, hasn't been calibrated yet, so we're not surprised to see it be a few degrees off from what we know this compass course to to get. So we're going to now go down into the cave and calibrate this and we'll compare it side by side in the cave to the Disto X. We've now moved down into Edwell Cave and what we're going to do is calibrate the Brick 4. Uh, and so there is a course that was created in here by Lynn Brucker to calibrate Disto X. And so I'll use that for doing some shots uh, to compare the Brick 4 with the Distos. And I'm going to go through the instruction document uh, that comes along with the Brick 4 to do a full inclination and azimuth calibration. So this top button right up here will take us to menu. And then we can use the middle two buttons to cycle uh, through the options. We're going to calibration right here. Press the top button, enter. And we're gonna go down here to full inclination and azimuth calibration. It says AZM slash ink calibration, take unidirectional groups of four shots while rotating instrument. Only last four shots of each group will be saved. Press any button.
calibration in this case resulted in what appeared to be low azimuth and inclination standard deviations of 0.065 and 0.059 degrees, respectively, in addition to small differences between the two accelerometers and the magnetometers. The manual states, accuracy of less than 0.1 degrees azimuth and inclination standard deviation can be easily achieved with a little care. So based on that, I'm proceeding on the assumption that the calibration worked. Please do note that a cave is not required to calibrate the brick 4. As stated in the manual, any magnetic interference such as watches, glasses, or nearby objects can corrupt this calibration. So anywhere there is no interference from metal objects is a place you can do the calibration. Stay away from the buildings, power lines, vehicles, fences, guardrails, and anything else with magnetic metal in it. A good place to calibrate on the surface is a tree. Like in the cave, make sure you collect a wide range of azimuths and inclinations. Now back to the survey course to take shots and see how it compares with the known azimuth and inclination of that course. But first, let's take a look at the details of the Cave Research Foundation's survey course located at the CRF Hamilton Valley facility in Kentucky, over top Mammoth Cave, and just outside the National Park. The compass course itself was calibrated to the star Polaris, with star shots taken in March of 2000. This enabled determination of the true north-based value of that course, which is 305.8 degrees. While the true north based on Polaris has no change over a couple of decades, in fact it shouldn't change for thousands of years, in comparison, the declination does change sometimes. So this needs to be monitored and a current correct value applied. On the day when the Brick 4 shots were taken at Hamilton Valley, the NOAA website showed a declination of positive 4.6 plus or minus 0.37 degrees at that location. So the actual value of magnetic north at the CRF compass course, at least at this moment in history, is 310.03 to 310.77 degrees, a range of 0.74 degrees. And that's really as accurate as it gets. Chris Fosnight writes in the user manual that the brick 4 can have accuracy down to less than 0.2 degrees and precision less than 0.1 degrees. This means that if the calibration is good, and the device is used accurately, then we should be able to get reliable cave survey data. Now let's get out the two devices, Brick 4 with serial number 0038, and Disto X2 with number 2420, and shoot them on the course at four roll positions including top, left side, bottom, and right side for both front and back sights. We know the course is perfectly level, and when the distance is measured with a survey tape, we get 49.25 feet. So there are three absolute numbers to compare the brick 4 and Disto X2 against. The azimuth, the inclination, and the distance. Since we'll be going in a cave later to do side-by-side -side shots, the Disto X2 will get the same treatment as the brick 4 on the survey course. Let's recall that the overall question to answer is, can this device be used to tell a true cave cartography story? So that means that we need to be able to get reliable cave survey data from it. We can get an estimate of the error of the device and its user by shooting a lot of shots on the CRF compass course to determine the difference between the device and course values. This estimate, which is really a simple correction estimate, is then incorporated into our survey to provide the range of possible outcomes that the device gives during cave survey. Here's a view of the front and backside data for the Brick 4 0038 and for the Disto X2 2420. In all cases, front and backsides agree well with no differences greater than 0.3 degrees. Recall that Chris stated that the accuracy could be as low as 0.1 degrees. So, with a maximum difference between front and back sight of 0.3 degrees, we're pretty close to that 0.1. Since these values are so close, I simply take the front sight and back sight average of each orientation. Here we can see that the front sight and back sight averages for top, left, and right sides are slightly outside the upper end of the true magnetic range maximum, which is 310. 0.77, and the average bottom roll position is well inside the range. Since we can't know which orientations will actually be used in cave survey, in this case I'm assuming the worst case scenario, which is the front sight back sight average with the largest deviation from the acceptable range. Thus I'm taking the maximum difference between the worst case average roll position and the maximum end of the range of the true magnetic value. In other words, we're looking for the worst value and the farthest end of the range, and assuming that that is the error of the device. This is a more conservative estimate than simply taking the average of all roll positions for front and back sight. 
meaning that for these data in this analysis, we can say that the error is equal to or less than the particular maximum value. For the brick 4, that value for azimuth is 311 degrees, which is really only 0.4 degrees from the ideal azimuth of the survey course. However, since there's a possibility that the true value is actually 310.03 degrees, we use that number and the brick's measurement of 311 degrees and get a maximum error of 0.97 degrees, or essentially 1 degree. So again, the reason for taking the largest possible maximum is that there's some chance that all the shots in the cave will be done at the left side roll position, and there's some chance that the true value of the CRF survey course is 310.03 degrees, giving us an error of 1 degree or less that we need to correct for. For inclination, we do the same thing and get an error of 0.25 degrees or less. Lastly, measure distance is similarly done and we get 0.05 feet or less. So now for all of the cave survey shots, we correct by the maximum possible error to obtain the most conservative estimate of the actual distance, azimuth, and inclination. Same process was used for the Disto X2. Overall, the values are looking quite good. However, before taking these devices in the cave, there are two more comparisons I did. First is use of a fictitious set of survey data that I created randomly to compare the ideal or so-called perfect survey instrument with the Brick 4 and Disto X2. The second comparison is a loop closure on the surface. And in both of these, I incorporate the maximum error, as described earlier. 20 survey shots were simulated using the random between function in Excel. They're shown here. We assume these shots are from a perfect, of course fictional, device that agrees perfectly with the CRF survey course. So essentially, on the survey course, the compass always gives 310.4 plus or minus 0 0.37 degrees azimuth. The inclinometer always gives 0 degrees vertical, and the rangefinder always gives 49.25 feet. I reduce these shots in Excel and compare where the final stations end up. So these are the shots for the random data in the final station XYZ possible range of positions. Let's now add the maximum errors from the Brick 4 0038 and Disto X2 2420, as described earlier and we can see the effect of these devices on the ideal data set. So this is really just another way to visualize that both the Brick 4 and Disto X2 performed quite well in comparison to the CRF Compass course. Next is a simple loop closure exercise. Note that the Brick 4 does have a loop test in the calibration option. It's easy to use and especially good for short in-cave loop closure tests. In this case, the loop I surveyed was above ground and consisted of six stations. The data were reduced in Excel, like the comparison just described. Both devices were used for the loop, and here we can see the result. So the results of this part of my evaluation are that the Brick 4 compares very well with the CRF survey course, and it provides data that allows a tight loop closure. So the answer to the question, after calibration, does the Brick 4 give reasonable shots in comparison to CRF survey course, is a clear yes. Lastly, we take the Brick 4 into a cave, and compare it with a Disto X2 for actual cave survey data. Here are those data, collected on a real survey trip in the Turley entrance of the Morrison section of the Mammoth Cave System. On the plots, we can see that the devices show close ending points, so the data match up pretty well. In addition, when the brick is compared to tape, we see nearly identical values. And so based on the in-cave comparison, I have a lot of confidence that the brick 4 is giving us reliable cave survey data. So can the Brick 4 be used to tell an accurate cave cartography story? The answer is yes, it can. After this evaluation, I can stay with confidence that the Brick 4 is as reliable and accurate as any other device commonly used for cave survey. For years I've been using Disto X2s and have come to rely on them. At this point, I don't have a preference for Brick or Disto since both give reliable data, and so I'll keep both in my cave surveying toolbox. For this evaluation, my conclusion is clearly that the Brick 4 is a reliable digital cave surveying device that should be considered when selecting tools for cave surveys. I highly encourage you to read the Brick 4 manual located here. In addition, here's an article by Marco Corvi that provides a comparison between the Brick 4, Disto X2, and the newest version of the Shetland Attack Pony, or SAP5. All of the data I've discussed in this presentation is available for download at the following links. Feel free to reach out to me by email with questions or comments about my experience evaluating and using the Brick 4. Lastly, 
please do contact me if you want to get on survey trips with me or others at Mammoth Cave. On this point, you can also visit the CRF webpage for information about joining and participating in CRF Mammoth Cave expeditions. With that, have a great rest of your virtual NSS 2021 WEED convention.